I'd like to talk to you about the scintillating scotoma, which I'm having right now. Um, there's another name for it, but I don't, um, like an aura headache or something like that. It's supposed to be a precursor to a migraine headache. <clears throat> and um, the reason I've got my eyes closed right now is what I've learned through trial and error. At least for me, is that it definitely is exacerbated by light and if I keep on looking at things it'll last a lot longer also um, I've also learned through doing a little bit of research is that it's different for everyone in certain respects now for me it has a kind of a C shape but at the this point here um, the C it's kind of like more like a, an angle almost than an, a, a, a nice curve. And the whole thing from tip to tip has um, a scintillating quality, which is to say there is a geometric pattern of primarily, I would say, triangles, and it they appear to be moving. Um, it's... I'm not sure if it's a constant single direction. I don't think so. I think it kind of shifts sometimes. But it, there's always this this sensation that it's it's moving. Um, when it first starts, it's very, very small. And you can't tell that it's a scintillating scotoma uh, because it's tiny enough that you can't see the scintillating or anything else, you just kind of notice there's a bit of an occlusion of your vision or a disruption of your vision. And for me, it, it starts a little bit off center, a little bit below. Like this, if this is my center of vision, it'll start right down in this area right here. And it'll be absolutely tiny. And it'll slowly grow and form this C and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually it'll expand out, uh, it'll expand outside of my range of vision. Um, and it seems to be primarily associated with my left eye. One of the things that I learned early this year is that week after week, I had scintillating scotomas uh, once a week. And I realized um, after doing some research, I saw an expert talking about things that could cause it and included not enough folate in your diet and not enough B12 in your diet. And I was B12 deficient, I realized, um, because I kept on forgetting to go um, buy some B12. I went to the store, got some of the sublingual liquid, uh, which means you put it under your tongue and hold it there for at least 30 seconds. And I applied that, and um, I had one more occurrence of it. And then after that, I didn't have any more up until now. So it's been like six months, I think. I usually only have it once or twice a year. Uh, so this will be the fourth time this year. So it's a little bit more common than what I normally experience, especially that previous time when I had three, once one every week for three weeks. Um, and that's my fault for not remembering the B12. So I'm not really sure exactly why I'm having it right now. Since I just had some B12 yesterday. Um, and it's now gotten to the point where it's really large. Now, one of the things that I've tried is I've tried to just tough it out and wait for it to disappear. I spent uh, a great deal of time once looking at a computer screen, waiting for it to go away. It wouldn't go away. Um, and other times where I've just tried to just ignore it. Um, best case scenario is, is I give up and, and close my eyes and leave them closed for, say, 20 minutes. Uh, depends on how long I've allowed it to be there before I close my eyes. That seems to impact how long it'll take for it to disappear. Um, best case, I think, has been like 10 minutes maybe um, before I was able to get it to disappear just by keeping my eyes closed and minimizing light to my eyes. Um, but usually I'd say it's closer to 20 minutes. Worst case scenario, I'll get a dull headache afterwards. Now I've I'm told that this is, again, a precursor to migraine, so some people will have it much worse than I, whereas I have the C shape. Some people have 
a general blurriness. Uh, well, not general blurriness. Uh, the scintillating is accompanied by a great deal of blurriness that basically makes it hard for people to do anything while it's going on. Um, and the shape isn't always a C shape, although it seems to be pretty common for it to be a C shape. Um, and I guess there's really not much else I can tell you about it at this time. I do have what feels like a very, very, very mild headache. It's almost imperceptible to me. Um, it's it's more in the back of my my neck here right now, so I'm going to just kind of try to rub that out. And that feels nice. Uh, uh, that feels very nice. So I'm not saying that this tension in my neck I'm giving myself lots of goosebumps massaging myself like this. I'm not saying that it has anything whatsoever to do with the scintillating scotoma. But again, um, every once in a while I have had a headache after the scintillating scotoma has um, disappeared. Um, well, I'm not, actually I can't say that it's disappeared, but that I, I've tried to ignore it and just carry on. So. If you have a scintillating scotoma, you can experiment. Try uh, making sure you're getting enough folate and enough um, vitamin B12. You can get vitamin B12. Of course, the best sources are crystal source uh, form and the sublingual form. Um, you can also get it by consuming nutritional yeast. Um, now, people used to believe that B12 was a product of animals, but in actuality, is created uh, by ba bacteria in the soil. And a lot of the bacteria has been damaged by human chemicals in farming to the point where those bacteria are dead. Um, so you can't actually get it from the normal source, which would be from eating plants. And a lot of us clean our, our fruits and vegetables so well that even if the B12 bacteria were still in the soil, we wash it all off. Um, so that's a downside of being too clean with our fruits and vegetables. Um, the, the fact that it's in livestock is just because the livestock will chew, chew up the, uh, grass roots and all, and thus get the bacteria that's in the soil into their gut. And by that they get provided with B12 nowadays because of the, uh, widespread absence of B12 bacteria in the soil, animals often have to be injected with B12 so that they have enough in, in, for themselves as well. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I know it's probably a bit weird for you to see me with my eyes closed. Uh, I do still have it. So uh, um, this is, it should be gone by now, but it's not. Uh, and that's okay. Probably going to take a little bit longer. It's um, pretty much mostly out of my field of vision now. I can just kind of see a little bit of it in this area here. Uh, still very, but it's very, very large. And the, uh, whereas when it was smaller, you know, like this, it was when it was in this area here, it was um, a very well defined geometric pattern that was shimmering or moving or whatever you want to say. Um, and now it's very vague, partially just because it's probably you know, that far out away from the center of my vision. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Um, if you have anything you want to share, maybe you have scintillating scotomas. Uh, maybe you can tell us how long that they last for you. Do, does closing your eyes and removing uh, light from your vision help, uh, like doing this? Um, do you have you noticed any correlation between folate consumption or B12 consumption and having them. Do you have headaches or migraines afterwards or during? Anything else? Um, how badly does it obscure your vision or prevent you from doing things? Does it happen in both sides or just one side? Like mine is always just one side. Although because my brain puts the two sides together to create a full field of vision, it does sometimes seem like it's both sides. But when I pay attention, I realize, oh, it's usually just one. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you have a great day. I almost forgot. Somebody's going to say, well, Glenn, you know, what, when did it start? Um, and I, and I remember the first time it happened. It was pretty, it freaked me out because I had no idea what it was. Um, I'm going to close my eyes again because it's, it's still bothering me right now. Um, this, the first time it happened to me was, I would say 1998. I was at work and it started happening. And I wanted to, I remember because I went into my boss's office and, and sat there and told him about it. And he was very patient and let me sit. And then I didn't have another one for many months. And um, you might be saying, well, Glenn, you know, it's because you're a vegan. And again, B12 comes from bacteria, not from animals. And at that time, I was eating ample amounts of meat. Um, so it had nothing to do with meat consumption. Um, I have, for most of my life, uh, except for when I was a vegan once in, before I went to Indonesia. And so that would have been like 2000, 2001. And then uh, when I, this year, um, I've had a very diverse diet uh, containing lots of different kinds of foods from all the different groups, I guess you could say. So I don't think it has generally to do with diet. Um, but, you know, I'm not an expert on this. Thanks. Um, so if you have any questions, um, maybe you are and want to try to help me to pinpoint uh, this problem, uh, feel free to ask questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.